And I think there it is. Are you live? I'm live. It says I'm in the show. Well, I'm glad that you're in the show. That means I must be in the show too, but we're not going to give a show because the show is going to be the one, the one we all desire. There you go. There's the suism for the day. Start out the morning with the suism. Oh, after me. I can't believe it. The fly just went right across my face. So good morning, everyone. It's good to see y'all. Good morning. Good morning. All those oh, YouTubers. Humble Dreamer. What a great name. The Humble Dreamer. Have you seen that before? Um, I think I saw, yeah, I think I saw a comment. Uh, I once love before. that. That's a great name. Welcome. Good morning. And Shashi, I've seen her name a lot. Kimberly and Laureen and Marika, Nancy, Carmen, all those Facebookers are jumping on now too. Hey, Roz, how you doing? And Tasha. Hell, Brewer. This morning, so. Um, Linda Renfer. Hi, or Renfro. Oh, yes. hey, Linda. It's good to see you, my friend. I haven't talked to you in a while, but I'm glad you're here joining us today. I always love having good Linda and Sue Ring. Yes. So. Oh, I love this. They do come through pretty quick, though. These um, the names. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I'm just like looking, and and by time you you pinpoint a name, it's already gone up. To I the know. Tops, which That's is why we're doing this too, because I'm like I'm trying to, you know, see it and read it. So, um, yeah. it's awesome. Good morning, Ariel. It's good to see you, my friend. Love that sweatshirt. It looks so good on you. I love it too, but I want to see. I know it sounds bad, but I want to see it. It's you know our barn forty five, but I I think my bed for some odd reason I must be in a different spot today because I can't move my chair back. I'm hitting my bed. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it says barn 45 anyway, but that's that um, harvest. What do they call that? Harvest gold. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but it is a fabulous color. Someone was wearing it and I can't remember who. Um, and I loved it. Maybe it was Colleen. It might've been Colleen. I'm just can't remember what anyway. I love this I can color. See Colleen swinging that color with that, um, uh, hat that has denim and gold in it. I also have on the uh, fall for Jesus, um, it, this color, this orange, I don't know. There's something about this kind of rusty orange. I really like it. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, had, had me a flannel to go with it. So, you know, that, that, that was a flannel. Flannel. <laughs> a fab. It is totally flannel weather right now. Sweater weather oh, for cool. some of you. I don't do sweaters because they, yeah, they make me too hot. I love the flannel, but uh, it's, it's totally flannel fall weather right now. The leaves have dropped. It's just that kind of gray, brownish, but the grass is still green. Oh, oh it's my favorite time of year. I wish I had that time of year here. I do not have that time of year here. Is it still pretty hot? No, no, no. We go from like literally like summer, which is, you know, anywhere from 90 to 110. Um, well, sometimes I mean, we go 75. I mean, we have some really good weather too. I'm, I mean, I can't complain. It's California, but we go straight from summer to winter from winter to summer from summer yeah. to winter. like that's just the way our our weather works is very weird we're probably going to be getting snow here soon so we're going to oh, be up in well, the mountain all right well sign me up i'll be out i get it we have a date i got it you got to take me out there sometime yes so. i know <laughs> i would love to see it it's mount shasta it's gorgeous yeah. So anyway, guys, um, got a few things to announce. Uh, one thing that I really want to uh, open up with is that we have planned our, or in the works of planning our women's Christmas event. And that's coming the first Friday of December. That's December 1st, believe it or not, is the first Friday of December. Um, and so there will be a registration for that. We have an awesome speaker lined up. She's got a word that God's been working on her for a year on this word. And, um, that's, uh, Lori powers actually. So she's going to give an amazing word that God's has been for, for a long time. And, um, some other interesting things to go along with that. It's going to be some, some awesome surprises that God's going to bring, um, along with, uh, amazing worship, uh, from Will Matea who are here for our third Thursday, but this is going to be a little bit different than a third Thursday. So that registration is going to be on Wednesday. That's next Wednesday, believe it or not. Um, for the Christmas event on December 1st. And that registration is going to be lickety split. I'm sorry. I wish our barn was bigger. Um, no, we pray for our, we don't wish, we, we're praying for our barn to get bigger um, to allow more people. But uh, that registration will open next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Mark your calendars, set your alarm because you're going to want to pop in on that one. Quick, quick, quick. Um, other than that, we've got the usual things going on. Tomorrow is volunteer day at 1045. 
and the store will be open here so you can pick up some of these fall goodies or um, other new, there's some beautiful colors and things going on. I'm not, you know, again, not my specialty, but I am really admiring some of the things that are getting in the store. This tone on tone thing, I didn't know it was a thing, but tone on tone is apparently a thing. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm, I've been loving all, I mean, I'm not joking. I, I'm glad that I don't live there because I, there's no way that I, I just couldn't like, I would be, well, we're already broke, but we'd be more broke. We'd be more <laughs> negative because yes. I would oh be one of all of the things. I love it. I, I mean, really, you guys are doing a fabulous, our little lovely Carol is doing a fabulous job. With Carol it. is our wonderful yeah. store manager. She does so many things around here fabulous. too, but man, yeah. she is really on the ball with it all. It's amazing. And um, Michelle, who is with the company that um, supplies um, all the goods is amazing too. So thank you guys for what you do. And, and the great thing about wearing this, it's not just about, you know, putting ourselves up on some sort of platform. People ask you about Barn 45 when you're out there. And it's just such an opportunity to, to really speak, you know, whatever God is putting on your heart to the, the person that's asking to share Jesus with them in the way that he, you know, brings to you. So we love that part of it. I um, always say it's a vulnerability hospital or authenticity maker, or like, I'm just, because I do feel like you just, we're more real here than I've ever been just in that. real life. Whoa. Well, that's going to be a theme today for sure, <laughs> FYI. Um, and then Lilies and Sparrows is on Thursday. And so check out the website. Man, um, Amber, who also does Lilies and, Lilies and Sparrows, has been really working on the website. It's getting so gorgeous. There's, count, there's a tab for the calendar that you can find things easier. Just the opening page, you scroll down, you see all the events that are current. You just click on it. It's so much e easier to find that was. So thank you, Amber, for your skills and bringing them into that place too. So mm -hmm. I think we're ready to roll. We got a lot to, to do here. Yeah, so let's, we we're, let's, we're, we're, we're excited. <laughs> I know. Let's roll it, girl. Do you want to open in prayer? Or you want me to? Yeah. What are you thinking? I'll, I'll open and then I'll, I'll read the I word. It. Oh, speaking of opening his word, oh, um, yes. do you not have a Bible we would like to send you a Bible because we want to eradicate Bible illiteracy and not just eradicate it. Like there are Bibles sitting around, but we got to open them. So, you know, we got to read them guys. Like that's, that's the thing. We got to open them, read them. It's simple. Very, yeah. very simple. <laughs> I love it, girl. And brick and mortar Bible, the real thing, brick right? I know because I write in mine. I love it. And I'm starting to get to a point where so this is my study Bible and I've dropped it a few times. Just, it's just so heavy or I've laid it down and it's kind of like open up. So my spine is starting to pull away, which is uh, kind of sad. Yeah. This is mine right now because Genesis, right? So yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> my Genesis has more writing of me in it now than Genesis, you know, Moses pen. So right, right. anyway, okay, let's pray and then let's we'll get started. Huh. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In this month of um, gratitude, of thanksgiving, we thank you for you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that we have um, your words, that we have your light, that we have the narrow road that leads to you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you have given us um, the ears to hear and the eyes to see and that you soften the places in our hearts. Please, God, for today, just um, open up our hearts that we don't harden them. Um, if we've seared our conscience, I pray that our conscience would come alive today, that you would come alive, um, that the love, uh, that you're constantly feeding to us, that we could receive it with your grace and we could walk out that grace, um, into this day, into this moment, God, um, not the future, not the past, but today, moment by moment, living with you, um, in the reality that that we have a future, that we have a hope, that we have um, we have intimacy, we have this relationship that only you can cultivate, God. So we surrender um, all. We surrender our hearts. We surrender our minds. We surrender our racing thoughts. We surrender um, th that drop of the hat. We re surrender our to do lists. We surrender the word responsibility. We surrender that to you. We, we, um, 
come under your authority, your grace, your love, your mercy, your holiness. We stand in awe, God. So thank you for today. Thank you for everybody on this live stream, God, and anybody that's watching later. I pray that you would just bless them, that you would help them to feel and know the favor that you already have poured all over their life, that they could recognize it today um, in this moment. So um, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So good, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. All right, girl, you got so I'm going to read. Um, I'm reading from the NIV. So if you guys have your Bibles, your pens, and uh, I have a lot of pens um, <laughs> and a lot of black notebooks uh, laying all over my house, to tell you the truth, because <laughs> I've noticed that um, even this morning, like I decided that I was going to just not have my, um, not have any noise. So no, not even worship music, um, which God doesn't always call me for that but today and let me tell you i i was walking around my house and just one thought one another thought another thought and i just kept writing things down so um i think the quiet the stillness is is um let's be still today let's be still and know um that he is god and let's see what what he does so um I'm going to start reading from chapter 39. We started at 10, right? It was 10 through 18 or 11 through 18. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11 through 18, yep. Yep, okay. So um, one day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants were inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. I find that interesting that she said he to the Then later you'll see she said slave to her husband. It's interesting. But um, yeah. look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. Da -da -da -da. I know, right? And in the NLT, it does say Hebrew slave when she's talking to the men. Oh, okay. And the, yeah, yes. so this is the NIV, yeah. and I just it, it didn't say that yeah, it said Hebrew, and then on the next one it said Hebrew slave, which it's to me that's cultivating and manipulative. Like she mm -hmm. already knew, like I'm not going to tell the slaves that he's a slave. I'm not going to put him down like that. I'm going to say he this Hebrew, you right. know. Uh, anyway, I just thought that was that was interesting. But take it away, Sue. Yeah, but it feels like there's a plan being put into action, doesn't it? So, yeah, I mean, I, to me, the title of this one was Live by Grace, Not by Grabbing. Ooh, <laughs> um, ooh Living by Grace, Not by Grabbing. And, and it's, you know, it's a theme we've talked about a lot. Um, and I, you know, I immediately had to write a prayer to God about this one because this is on a subject that's difficult for me. And that's, to me, I'm going to go deeper into the sexual intimacy aspect of this. And I'm like, really? You're going to have me talk about this? Because <laughs> yeah, I love it. This so. is the thing that I struggle with very intensely. And um, so, okay, God, that's perfect. Um, you know, bring what you want to bring and get me out of the way. And I need it too. And that's that's what he does because I need it too. Um, so, you know, the number of times it says she in these scriptures, isn't that interesting? She, 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 she. You know, and, and before that, all we heard was um, yep. um, Potiphar's wife or um, his master's wife kind of right. thing. Never, never a name. We've talked about that. You know, we do know from other sources her name is Zulika, something like that. Zuli, we've called her. But I kind of camped on that. I thought, you know what? This is kind of interesting that God didn't name her in his word. He did make that name accessible in another source, but he didn't name her his word. And I think. You know, we've looked at her from one aspect that we are all Zuli, right? Mm -hmm. But I think there's another view, and that is like we see Joseph's brothers. We've been seeing um, how the enemy acts 
through the lens of Joseph brothers. Throughout this whole thing, we're looking at Jesus through the lens of Joseph, right? But I think we can see again, how the enemy acts through the lens of she, <laughs> she kind of the, the unnamed version. Um, there are many views actually. And we are, you know, whenever we're reading a story and you see different characters, we really can put ourselves in the shoes of any of these characters. Mm -hmm. um, so this is another view that came to me uh, that God was kind of pointing out in me because I need it. <laughs> so um, backing up to verse 10, she's putting pressure on Joseph every day, right? She sa uh, it says she's putting pressure on him every day to do what? To sleep with her, to sleep with her. And it, to me, he was there for 11 years every day. We don't know exactly how long when she started doing this, you know, but it was until the last day he was there that she stopped because this was the last day that he was there. Right. Um, and so it feels relentless. Yes. And this is what, this is the enemy. Like even I thought about even when Jesus was in the wilderness with, um, out there with the enemy being tempted by the enemy in the wilderness. He was led into the wilderness by God, but then he was being tempted while in the wilderness. He spoke truth back to the enemy and, you know, defeated the enemy's lies. And then at the end, he says, now leave me Satan. But it says in Luke 4, 13, when the devil had finished, he left him until an opportune time. He was coming back. The, the enemy will be coming back in our life at some point, even when we are standing firm on the rock of Christ, even when we flee from his temptations, it doesn't mean that he's going to, you know, be gone forever. <laughs> There's not going to be a point where we, we just go boom and he's gone forever. And, no, true. you know, so I think sometimes we get caught up by that. Yes. You know, we need to stay we need to be looking to Jesus because he is our rock to stand in in the face of the enemy. But there are times, and the enemy is always prowling around. First Peter 5, 8 to 9, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Mm -hmm. the that's what's so gorgeous about this community because you, oh Lord. when we come and talk about what we're struggling with and we put it out there in the open, that is a huge defense against what the enemy is doing to us. And that is a big part of this story too. Um, if you read in Job, um, you know, God allows uh, the enemy to, it's in his timing um, that the enemy is allowed to do this or that. I love that you read in Job not that long ago. Um, so it's in God's timing, like when the enemy is allowed to take action on us and when he's not. And so it's for it's, our benefit. It's that's for right. our benefit. It's to grow our faith so that we know that we're strong enough, that we're growing in faith. God doesn't need to do that for us. He does it out of the kindness of his heart. That's right. It's the enemy does not have free reign in our lives ever. He has to answer to God always. Mm -hmm. And if Jesus tells him something, he has to obey. He has no choice. So, but reading from first, um, from Job 1, 6 to 12, I'm going to read most of that pretty quick here. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Like, like we know he's always prowling around looking for things. And he came with this heavenly court before God. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord. I've been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Just like I read out of first Peter, because he's always watching. He's always preparing evidence against us to bring before God. So that when God calls him to present that evidence, he has it and he can make a case against us. And that's exactly what he does. God is asking about, well, have you considered my my wonderful servant, Job, my faithful servant, Job. Um, Satan replied to the Lord, going to verse nine. Yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. Um, you have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is, but reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you towards your face. All right, you may test him. And, and isn't that crazy? The accuser, accuser means that the, it's fact. He's, he's constantly spewing facts about us, about what I did in my past, about who I am, about what, what I've done. Right. So that that's fact. 
But Jesus is constantly standing right next to the accuser, right? Going right to God. I've already paid for that. I, I've already taken care of that. This right. is mine. She is mine constantly to, to God, the father. So we're, we're in him and Jesus is in, in God. And so, so the accuser can, can say all those facts. That's why speaking it out and getting it out is so great because yeah, 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 I am. Yep. I, I was an adulterer. Yep. I'm a recovering addict. Yep. Uh Uh-huh. Same. Same. And, 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 and exactly. And so yeah. this is, I think, a big part of this story um, that we can see here. So verse 11, one day, it, this started verse six in Job, one day. So verse 11, back to Genesis uh, 39, verse 11, it starts one day. Well, guess what? That one day always comes um, in God's timing. You know, the enemy is planning and preparing his evidence. And that one day is going to come when he thinks you know, when, when God allows him and when he thinks that he's ready to enact his plan. So here's the one day uh, with Joseph and there's no men in the house when Joseph comes in. Now that's not by coincidence. <laughs> she, she, or the enemy through she, right? The enemy through she, um, sh she has cleared out the house. Uh, you know what? And this has been happening for a long time that she has been uh, after him to get something from him. Do you think it's weird too? So is she, when she was being good, right? Not whatever, she was Potiphar's wife. She right. still didn't have a name, but she was Potiphar's wife. But then as soon as she started to that tempt him or like say that, you know, sleep with me today, she became a she. Like it's, she's no longer a Potiphar's wonder. wife anymore. That's right. She's, You're she, right. She, she's, she's not associated with Potiphar now. It's just she. Yeah. Did that really struck me? And I think you I think you nailed it. Yes. And now now that she's become just she. She's even less of a person now. She's and she's putty in the enemy's hands because she's so desperate to get something to the point now she's got this plan and her plan is okay, this one day now this plan comes to action. Verse 12, she came and grabbed Joseph by the cloak and demands again, "Sleep with me." So her plan now is to get everybody away from them and she's going to grab him. And this is finally going to be the, the thing. Um, she's the point of desperation. She's trying to grab what she thinks she desperately needs yeah. to get through this life. And this is her only chance. This is her last chance. Um, sleep with me. So this just took me down a whole road. I'm like, okay, Lord, show me what's going on here with the sleep with me. What is she trying to get? How is she trying to get it? Okay, so the Hebrew word, I'm not going to say these right, S-A-K-A-B, is the sleep with me, sakehab. It's to lie down. It's a sexual connection. It's decease, cast down, lodge, ravish, sleep, rest, stay. I'm thinking, yeah, it's a going down for sure. <laughs> it's a going down out of God's uh, plan and secure boundary. Um, it's been used, this word has been used in many places, but it's not the only word used for sexual relations, sexual connection. But let me just show you some of the places this word has been used. It was used in Genesis 19. Lot's daughter lay with their father to get pregnant. Ooh, that was going down out of, out of God's plan. Genesis 26, Abimelech used it when he was worried someone might have slept with Sarai when Abram, Abram lied to him. So that wasn't, that wasn't God's plan for sexual union. Um, Genesis 28, Jacob actually used the same word when he was lying down after leaving home and he had that rock under his head. And then God promised to give him all the land he was lying on. So that was kind of, that's kind of interesting use of it. Genesis 30, Rachel and Leah used it when they were bargaining with mandrakes. Do you remember Remember that? They were bargaining with the mandrakes to get Jacob to lie down with him, with them that night. So finally, Leah wins and she said to Jacob, you must sleep with me. I hired you. That's not God's plan for a union within a marriage. Um, Shechem used it in raping Dinah. This is the word that was used when Shechem raped Dinah in Genesis 34. And he lay with her by force. And then in Genesis 34, second, 34, 7, Jacob's sons were outraged at Shechem. And they said, a thing, 
Shechem had slept with Jacob's daughter, and they said, a thing like that should not be done in Israel. That kind of using use of this sexual connection. Um, Reuben also slept with his father's concubine. He laid with his father's concubine. So these all examples of the use of this kind of sexual connection, it does not bring what it promises. In fact, it brings the opposite. It's a lie of the enemy. And so Joseph runs out of there because he knows it. And he's run into his father and she's left holding that cloak. Um, Joy talked about that so much yesterday. It was it was a great word from Joy yesterday. Oh, we say that every week, but I am telling you, every week it gets better. And you have just got to, you've really got to watch Mondays. Um, Mondays to, are, I, I mean, I probably say it too all the time, but really Mondays are my favorite day. Like. Right. I love it. They're all my favorite. I'm and all of them. And man, I'm telling you, Fridays too. Man, I've been you know, like, I don't always. Oh, this last, this last live. Friday. These Fridays have been rocking my world. I just, I'm loving those too. So they're all good. Um, so Joseph runs out of there. Um, so, you know, Zuli, she's grabbing and taking the enemy's plan. And that's where she's at right now. And then she calls the men back in. Um, and I love, like you said, so she's, she's telling the, the men in the house, come back in. This is what's happened. Uh, that Hebrew slave that was brought here, he's making sport of us. But when she was saying that to her husband, she said, that Hebrew slave you brought here. It just made me uh, think exactly of Adam speaking to God when God said, what have you done? And he says, it's that woman you put here with me. <laughs> You know, it's that it's that whole blame game. These bad things are happening because of what somebody else has been doing. Um, well, and it's calculated. It's very calculated. They've already thought what she's already thought what she was going to say. She already answers. calculated it out. Yeah, she's already starting. So she's already being manipulative. She's already oh. getting, you know, and so and and I know I know how she feels too. Like I can feel that gut punch, like, oh no, I'm gonna get in trouble. So you're already thinking, what lie do I need to use to cover That's up the right. lie that I just told? The the manipulation, the and it's constant. And so, and it's weird because I woke up with a horrible using dream last night. I haven't had a using dream in a long time, but this using mm. dream was real. I woke up in a like my alarm went off this morning and I'm like, mm. and it was Whoa. so real. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's not me anymore. And it because it was I was at it was birthday and it was two thirty in the morning, and I was at the at the casino and I was drinking and I hadn't even talked to my family. I hadn't even talked to my husband or my kids, um, in this dream. And I mean that's happened before. And so I, you know, it's my birthday and I'm not even with them and I haven't even looked at my phone. Uh, you know, and so I woke up with that and I just was so grateful, like that. So I see where I, I know how she feels right now. Like, yeah, that, that, same. And she didn't just get to this point. She didn't just become an adulterer. You know, she, she neglected the soil of her heart for years and years and years, because that's what I did. You know, same. You think you're protecting your heart and you end up neglecting the soil of your heart and your heart gets so desperately needy. Yeah. Because when you're protecting it, it can't be filled by Jesus the way he wants to fill it either. And you're not getting what you're thinking you're getting from everybody. Else. So yes. And then you're just desperate and you do, you are susceptible yes, to acts of desperation like this woman and been there, done that as well. And that That's scared it. fear of being authentic and real and being like, you know what? I did do that. And I'm sorry, but she yeah. couldn't. I mean, you, she couldn't even think that way because she didn't know who to go to. She didn't know what the answer was. So she had to cover it up and protect herself even more because she, then she'd lose everything. Right. Right. Oh, well, it's so sad to me. Anyway, it, go on. Sorry. It's so sad, you know, but God, but God, okay. um, you know, this making sport of too. another Hebrew word that is like to laugh outright, um, to, to mock and to play with. It's like, to me, it just defined exactly what the enemy does. It wasn't that Hebrew slave that was mocking and laughing. It was the enemy that was mocking and laughing at her, yes. you know? Yes, exactly. And that's what he does. He flips the script through lies. Okay. Yeah. He presents facts, but he twists yes. and they end up being lies. And that his goal in that, his goal in that, and I'm sure that he accomplished it with her was to 
cloak her. She's holding that cloak, right? Sorry, there's a wagon. She's holding that cloak because he's cloaking her in shame. Mm -hmm. He wants to neutralize her life. She probably okay. had a purpose. She, We all do. And so Satan wants to neutralize that purpose. And the way he does that is separate what you know, fact from reality and all of our feelings from, from what the, the truth. He's, he's separating the truth and her actual feelings and her emotions from each other. So anyway, right. go sorry. No, no, I love it. Interject. This is great. So um, you're, you're enhancing girl. Um, so Ooh, I know. So this just got me going because I'm like, all right, Lord, I need to know more. Um, this is some, again, I, I talked last week about always going back to Genesis one to three. Well, now I'm adding four to my repertoire because Lord, what, what did you intend? I know, you know, a lot of us have used this sexual connection, um, you know, sex in a way that we're trying to get something out of it. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're male or female. There are things that we're all trying to get out of it um, that, you know, God is the only source of that. I'm like, what did you intend? So I came to mind that, okay, go back and look at the first um, sexual encounter in the Bible. And it's in Genesis 4.1. 4.1. Um, and it's where, and it says the man had sexual relations with his wife. Um, the man, Adam, I'm sorry. The man, Adam had sexual relations with his wife. The first thing I noticed, they are both named. They're both named. They both have a name. It's not she and he and whatever. They have a name. And so that is a big, important part of this. All the different versions in English, it says, I'm going to read a couple of them because it's interesting. The different versions of this Genesis 4.1, one says, Adam knew Eve, his wife. Adam made love to his wife, Eve. The man was intimate with the, his wife, Eve. The man had relations with his wife, Eve. Even where it says man, though, that really is identified as Adam in the original language. The mad ha man had marital relations with his wife, Eve. Adam knew his wife, Eve. And she conceived is the next part of that verse. Adam knowing Eve brought life, life resulted, conception. Hebrew word there for sexual relations or know, or Adam knew the new, it's Y-A-D-A. -A. This word is stunning. It's a stunning word. It just like this, this is where God just, he is so gorgeous and stunning the way he weaves every single word, every single letter and every single word to show us truly who he is and how good he is. This word yada, um, it's a complicated word about knowing. Um, there's just many uses and way to use it. Um, it's figurative, it's literal, it's euphemistic, it's inferential. Um, it's about observing care recognition. There's so many things. There's so many parts of this definition and near the end of the definition in the Strong's Concordance, it says, lie by man, like sex. Okay. Lie by man. Sex is a part of this word. And I'm thinking, whoa, yeah, like all, it's all encompassing. It's about that all encompassing intimacy God has made us for. Um, and, and lie by man is woman made to walk next to man. If we go back to Genesis 2 21, she's taken from his side. This is a lying next to, it's not you know, in front of whatever, all the, I'm not, we're not talking positions, whatever, but it's a lying next to, we're not going there, but it's a lying next to, like she is, she's taken from a side and made to walk side by side with him. Um, the both are equally important is the point. And this is where the intimacy of one flesh of God, it's not just a physical act of having sex, the sexual intercourse. Yes. That's a big, that's a part of it. I don't, I don't, want to, I don't want to put a qualifier on that. That is a part of it, but there's so much more to it that God designed. And this word is just gospel gorgeous and showing that it involves revealing vulnerability, nakedness, experiencing, fully engaging with another, fully knowing another, fully being known by another. Um, this is what we were made for, but we are made for that first. Okay, the address. Genesis 4, 1. Of course it is. 
So it's four, right? It's it's that it's that Hebrew fourth letter, the Dalet. It's that door that Jesus is knocking at, that he's asking us to open, that door of grace, that door of his presence, that door of him, him coming into us. That is the number four, right? Joy has talked about this so much. And then the one, the coming together is one flesh and in, in unity, intimacy. It starts with him first. I'm just I'm like blown away. Okay, there's more. It gets better. Um, but Revelation 3.20, look, I stand at the door and knock. This is Jesus talking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. He as is friends. the door. He is the door. He comes in. That is an act of intimacy right there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so Adam and Eve... They had been this before four one. Genesis three happened, right? Where they took the fruit that they were told not to take, and God went walking through the garden, and He called out to them, and they were hiding. They tried to cover themselves, but when He called, they came out and said, "We were hiding because we were afraid." So they admitted. Adam and Eve had been vulnerable before God about what they had done. Um, God still had more work to do in them, but this was a beginning, right? Of them after the sin being vulnerable and stepping into the light of what they had done. And so Genesis 4, 1 comes after Genesis 3. And I just, I'm like, because what happened is in the last part of Genesis 3, God covered them fully with skins of animals and that just represents, you know, they received from God the full covering for what they had done, mm -hmm. the covering of the skins and the promise, which was going to be the complete covering for what they had done. The promise of the rescuer and the redeemer to come, who is Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they were vulnerable with God. They were covered by his grace. Genesis 4.1. They were in intimacy with him, Genesis 4, then Genesis 4, 1. So it, intimacy is designed. We have to first be intimate with God. So this is where this gets cool. Because that word yada, um, it's spelled, I wanted to put up a picture of it here. I, could, I didn't have time to make it happen. I'm sorry. But if you go into Strong's Concordance or any concordance and see the original Hebrew characters, um, yada, the Y-A-D-A, which means to know and all those beautiful definitions, um, also sex contained in there. Um, it has three Hebrew letters. Guess what is the center letter of that word? Oh, no. <laughs> the Dalet, the fourth Hebrew letter is the center letter of that word because Jesus is the center. He's the door to the center of real intimacy to really know. And then Adam, did you know that Adam is also three Hebrew letters and the really? center? His name is the Dalet. So like so 1 Corinthians 15, 21 to 22. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Mm. Everyone dies because we all belong to Adam. Everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Like he is the man. Jesus is the man that comes to us intimately. Mm -hmm to know us, to have intimacy with him, to fill that desire of our heart. Mm -hmm. And from that connection, the man knew his wife and she conceived. Eve means life. So Eve, <laughs> so out of that connection with Christ comes life, that abundant life. Did you know Eden? Eden, where the garden is, means pleasure. And Eden is also spelled with three Hebrew letters. The middle one is the Dalet. We were made to live in the Garden of Eden in yes. an intimate relation, relationship with our Lord and Savior. And the Garden is an enclosed space within Eden. It's a secure boundary. Uh, I how do you say it? Enclosed, but it has a boundary completely around it that is living in the boundary of God's presence, mm -hmm. God's sustenance, God's intimacy with this. 
That is where our joy is. He, we were made for pleasure and intimacy with him and then with each other in yeah. his boundaries. I, this is, I mean, it's, it's gospel gorgeous. Um, so I had more about, um, you know, there's one more word of sex used. And again, it's just a, a perversion that the enemy had used to, to grab things. Um, but, you know, John 15, 5, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. This is Jesus talking. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So it's when we're living in him, that in, see that in, like in intimate language, into me see, right? Like living in him, we're allowing him to, to um, have full access to our heart being fully known by him, fully knowing him. So um, yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. He's a gorgeous God. I, the way he weaves his word, I'm giving you homework. Psalm 139, one, two, six. This is about our intimate relationship with him. The word yada is no, is used in those verses several times. Um, and it's about how we are known by him and we invite him to know us, to search us and know us. Um, does he know, do you know that he knows you? Cause he does know you. Do you know that? And do you know him? Spend some time with him in this. And, uh, yeah. Ephesians 5, 31 to 32, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. Mm -hmm. That's what I had. Yours was so, I mean, it was so good. And I feel like, guys, that was like the, that's the dream. Like, that's what we all want. But um, I, how do we get, how do we get there? And how did she become an adulteress? Like, how did this woman get down to this depraved, depraved thing? So um, I feel kind of crazy and kind of, probably kind of a little bit radical, but um, it, uh, for me, God just brought me to idolatry, um, that, that to have that intimacy with Jesus, um, you have to have him on the throne of your heart. He has to be number one mm. and what gets in the way of him being number one is idolatry. Yes. And, um, unfortunately, you know, it, well, not even unfortunately, um, I was, what, what is more important to you than God? What is your mind constantly on when you wake up in the morning, when you're at lunch, when you go to sleep at night, um, at any given moment during your day, what consumes your moments? Mm. What are you, what are you feasting on? What are you listening to? What are you walking around buying? What are you, what is taking up? most of your headspace because yeah. I guarantee if it's not God, it's an, an idol. It's an idol. It is an idol. And um he brought me to this word and I don't know why, but um the word responsibility. <laughs> did you know that the word responsibility did not exist in the human language in any human language until the industrial revolution? And did you know that Western culture came out of the industrial revolution and that the industrial revolution didn't start till the 1760s or something like that. And it only went for like a hundred years or so. Um, and so to me, that says a lot. That's wow. a lot because <laughs> I'm going to read the, I'm going to read the definition of responsibility. Huh? And, and I think this is where us women get, get um, this, this, I feel crazy. I'm not going to lie because no, I'll tell you, but anyway, so I'm going to read the, I'm going to read this. Um, uh, resp a responsibility is something you're required to do as an upstanding member of a community. Whoa. And so as a noun, it's the social force that binds you to the course of action demanded by that force a form of trustworthiness, the trait of being answerable to someone for something or being responsible for one's conduct, hmm. the proper sphere or extent of your activities. 
And I think we've been raised, I think that culture has raised us up as responsibility is something that God wants for your life, that you are to be responsible, that you're to pay your tax. Well, tax. Okay. Well, let's not say taxes, but let's say, um, I think I've gotten to a point where I'd like to live in a tent to tell you the (laughs) truth, because what's taking up my brain space right now is the fact that I just got a letter from our homeowners insurance saying that they want pictures that they're going to within 30 days, they want pictures of uh, the outside of our house underneath our, you know, sink and our water heater. They want to know if we've replaced our roof, which we haven't in 17, 15 years, we haven't needed to, but, um, and that we're going to get a denial letter until we have all these things. So I'm thinking in my head immediately, I'm like, Oh, great. If you get denied in California and they're doing this because I'm in a, I'm in a disaster zone. We've had so many fires. Um, Fires have not touched my home, but my home, my home is older. So I'm immediately going, Oh, great. My immediate reaction was I'm not going to be able to get homeowners insurance. And then I'm going to be, you know, all these things. And, um, it took up so much space and so much time and so much energy that I'm like, I don't, it makes me feel icky. I don't want that anymore. And I don't want what Western culture says is, the status quo, because it takes away from my time with my Jesus. It takes away from the joy and the peace and the contentment. And we all have this. And it all comes from this word responsibility. Whoa. That we think that there's this right, this this right way of doing things and that God has called us to this responsible living. God didn't call us to responsibility. He called us to himself. He called us to pick up our cross and follow him. He wow. called us to deny ourselves. So that means the comforts, the the everything, to deny that part of us. And then guess what? Guess what? When we do that, then he's going to bring it all back. Then he's going to bring it in. It's going to be in right order. And it's not going to take space in our brains. It's not going to take space in our hearts. And it's not going to bring us down to Hmm. that adulterous woman. It's not going to bring us down to wanting to sear our conscience so much because if we can sear our conscience, we're not going to have that dissonance all the time because there is a dissonance that goes on inside of us when we already believe in Jesus. I believed in God a long time ago. I was raised in a Christian home, but that dissonance of what I'm supposed to be doing based on the responsibility given to me by the culture and, and what I felt was the truth was constantly warring inside of me and in order, and I couldn't get to God. I didn't know how to do it. So then in order for that dissonance to go away, I had to sear my conscience and guess what I did. I laid down, I laid down with men. I laid down with drugs. I laid down with alcohol. I did things with women. I bought, I bought, I consumed, I consumed, searing my conscience more and more and more and more and more and putting things on the throne of my heart, idolatry, things that were more important to me than God, thinking that that is going to get me, it's going to get rid of that, that yuck inside. And guess what? It just made me more numb, more empty, more desperate to find the truth. And so I'm sorry. I'm like, I literally, I'm so passionate about this because- because that's what we're doing right now. We are walking around empty and we're walking around putting our kids first, putting our husbands first, putting our homes first, putting all this this responsibility, paying the car payments. And why do we have these car payments? Because we want something to fill this gap that's never going to be filled. That's right. Ever, 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 ever. And we're going to end up laying down our lives for things like adultery. We are going to sear ourselves into oblivion and we are going to die. (laughs) And I know this is so hard, but I am telling you, it's killing me more than anything that, um, she didn't just wake up one morning and become an adulteress. She she was putting on parties. She was being the hostess with the most she was Potiphar's wife. He's second to to the king of Egypt, right? So she is doing all these things that God never, not once called her to do. Mm. Not once did he call her to do those things. So she is now doing those things and she's doing them to, to, to be something. And, and, um, and, and nothing is ever filling her. 
nothing's ever getting to the point. Nothing's ever going to last. And so um, she put things on the throne of her heart other than God, other than Jesus. And, and so then when, and when you do that, then you get down to becoming an adulterer. You, wow. you become, you become what, what society tells you you're going to become really. I mean, you you're, become you're laying like, down with the enemy. I mean, you're laying yeah. down with the enemy. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, that, that's a uh, unregional, that's, that may be the best place for you to go if that's where you're at actually, because then you'll be in a place of breakdown yeah. when you, when you fully come down and lay down with him. But, uh, I get, I get the feeling you're talking about all these expectations that she had all around her from people all around her trying to meet all the expectations. She had an incredible list of shoulds. I mean, yeah. she was, she was shoulded all over. So, and the, yeah, the social <laughs> force that binds you to courses of actions demanded by that force. So mm -hmm. she is thinking that she, right that these are expectations. These are outward that, that they're controlling what she's supposed to be doing. It's an outward force. And so, and I think we do this, uh, we walk around too, like our spirits are, are dying inside of us. We are, we're, we're, what's happening is that what we, who we are, the victory that we have in Christ becomes separate from how we feel. Mm -hmm. So we don't feel that we are victorious. We don't feel that, that we have the mind of Christ and the way, and the reason is because we're not, because the right order is not in our life. Because we have idolatry. Uh, you know, I have dirty, I, I know we've gone here before, but I got dirty dishes right now. The only thing done in my household right now is my bed. It's made. You know why it's made? It's because I'm on here. But that's, that's about right. it, right? I'm in sweatpants right now, okay? I haven't even taken a shower yet. You know why? Because God did not call me to that shower yet, right? God did not call me to cleaning out the leaves in the pool and cleaning up the leaves out in, in the backyard. God called me to this. God called me to him. God called me to the, to a relationship and an intimacy with him. And if we don't start listening to that call, if we don't start laying down the dissonance that we feel when our dishes are dirty, if we don't start laying down how we feel because we we want to not, you know, ruffle the feathers in our home, right? We don't we don't want to we don't want to feel what other people are going to feel when we're putting God first. Mm -hmm. If we don't start wanting to feel that, <laughs> we're not going to get anywhere. We are a new creation. We are in Christ, and we have to start to be willing to put Him first. Yeah. We have to. The, because. The Power behind that is shame. That's what you keep talking about. The only power that can defeat shame and that is grace. Grace is a greater power, more abundant always than shame. So those are all shame-based activities that you're talking about. Yes. And, and it's our whole entire life. We feel that this is something that we need to do. That's Who right. Said? Who said? Who Who's said? Who's standard? Who, Who said, said that standard? That? What standard? Yes. And I'm just like, and it's killing me because then we're wondering why when, when, um, you know, we live in a broken world. We live in a pain machine is what my, my pastor calls it. And so when the pain comes and when we lose a spouse, we lose a child or when, when that financial burden hits us because it will, we have no faith. We have no trust. We have no nothing because we've been walking around doing for so long. And I'm telling you that God, when we deny ourselves and when we put him first, when we deny those idols and when we let go of that standard, when we let go of the responsibility, when we let go of Western culture, when we let it go and lay it down, guess what? God brings in this beautiful right order. I'm sitting last night in my, in my home with my children, my husband's out on graveyard shift. We have kind of just opened our hands like this. Mm. We thought that he was going to end up with graveyard, but I have been praying, God, if that's where you want him starting, then by all means, we give it to you. We're I'm giving you this season. I'm going to give you my husband, but please God, 
if you don't, he's 42 and 41. Graveyard shifts are rough. They're just rough. They're rough on the family. We have to be quiet. He has to try to sleep. He doesn't get much sleep. It's four to five hours um, of sleep. And it's not really an uninterrupted because it's bright as all get out, even with the blackout curtains, even oh, with the cover, all of it, you know, uh, it just is not very, it's not good for your body. So I, I prayed, guess what? At the last minute last night, we're sitting there. I'm sitting there watching a movie with my children, right? I should be, I'm, I, you know, I should be cleaning. I should be putting the dishes in the dishwasher. Yeah, right. That's how I, no, I don't feel guilt. I feel love and great. And I'm just so excited that I'm getting to sit here with my son and his girlfriend and, and live and my daughter and, and my husband texts me and he goes, guess what, babe? I said, what? He goes, I got Days a. days a he got days a so he literally he's on a graveyard shift right now he works graveyard tonight and then he's off until sunday and then he starts his new shift as a wow, deputy that's he's awesome. sent out on his own but also it's already he feels vulnerable that's what he said he feels vulnerable being out there alone it's a very vulnerable place and it's so great though because sue he's not vulnerable do you know how small you we feel small but truthfully we're not we have the god of the universe that's living inside of us so he is walking and breathing and and covering my husband as he goes out in this on patrol at night but yeah. he's not vulnerable <laughs> He's not vulnerable at all because he's got God. That's and so right. I just, I, oh, I'm so, anyway, so he sends that to me and I thought, thank you, Jesus. So, you know, I could have got, that could have taken up headspace. And what you could have tried to do? manipulate it and do right. all kinds of things to right. make it be the way you wanted it to be. It. Right. You surrendered it. You gave it yes. to God and you said, if, if it's your will. Your will yep. be done, but Lord, yep. yeah. So and I, love I didn't it. try to go out and buy all the things for him to sleep, trying to figure out. I didn't go out and try to do all of those things, even though we he was on graves. Like they gave him that shift. He was starting this week. He's been working the graveyard shift. And I still was like, mm, I just am not ready to try to try to rearrange our whole entire life because it God wasn't telling me to yet. I was I living, that. I'm constantly in this but it's moment by moment every That's single right. second constantly what is my brain thinking about right now up oh, it's starting to stress it's starting to starting to try to figure it out on my own and that's not what god's calling me to so i'm gonna rest and but it's constant it does not stop sue it's constant in my ear i'm constantly and know me know my anxious thoughts i mean they're always always so you have to be still though you have to let it go you have to release it you have to but in order to do that in order to get where i am today you have to be in his word every single day you have to be surrendering to him and asking him and and over the dishes over the laundry over your children over your husband everything it has to be over them and when it is he'll give you them He'll bring them alongside of you. He'll bring the every all right order. He your dishes, your house, your your baseboards might not be still clean. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> because he's not calling you to that. But right. it will be manageable. It there will be this right or there'll be a peace. So even though my dishes are dirty, I have a peace inside my house or in my heart, right? Anyway, sorry. I know we're probably no, where are you? Over no, we're, actually, we're, 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 in, we're doing great. No. I'm just like, yeah. I'm just kind of stuck on, are we supposed to clean our baseboards? But uh, aside from that, I'm, no, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love where he has brought you with all of this. And it's an incredible testimony, Ariel. I mean, just, I can, I remember seeing some Facebook posts of yours, like selling things because you had accumulated so many things of life. Oh, yeah. Know? Oh. And he's just, he's just clearing out for Everything. your good, for your yes. good. Yes, so. because he knows it takes up space. Because he knows that the cleaning, that the clothes, that the, that the pool, it takes up space inside of my head that does not belong there. Right. He belongs there. Now, he will give me what what he wants to give me. But honestly, like I was telling you earlier, I think before I came on, I would rather live in a tent. Why, where did we get this? Now we have all this insurance and all these things, all these stipulations, you have to have permits to, to do anything to your own home, right. to, to 
to upgrade your own home. And, and it all takes up space. It all takes up a, a place in our heart and in our mind that should not be there. And um, I'm not saying everybody go out and sell your home, but, no. but really evaluate what is important. And if there is anything on a pedestal that comes before Jesus Christ, before the intimacy that he wants to develop in your heart, in your mind, in your life, you better start getting rid of it now. Asking him, take it, take this from me. Start opening up because you have to do that otherwise and get him cultivate that place in your heart that's surrendering. Because if you don't trust me, when the stuff comes, you will fall like a cheap suit. Like, one day, one day always comes. Always, one day always comes. That's right. One day always comes. And, and even if you, and even if, all right, even if you do, that is not you know, to say that it's not possible for God to, to meet you there in that place. Obviously, I almost died, like, and I'm still here. And I just, that song keeps coming to my head. Better one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Wow. It's better one day in your courts. And, and I'm going to rest in that today. I'm going to rest in that peace. I'm going to rest in the fact that, you know what? I might get to Costco today. I might not. But you know what's more important? The moment by moment living. Let's stop living in the past. Let's stop living in the future. Let's start living for the intimacy that was always meant to be. We were always meant to be in an intimate, close relationship with Jesus Christ, with God, with the creator of the universe. Let's walk hand in hand. Let's know that. And then let's feel that. Let's ask for that feeling, that presence, that anything that's going to get us to there. And let's keep let's keep moving forward together as a community. Like I, I just, I can't even tell you because I was an adulterer. And the reason I got there is because I put things on my heart that should never have been there. Same. And I desired things that should have never been there. Yep. And um, idolatry is, it, I, it goes hand in hand. Like Joy said, idolatry and that sexual perversion goes hand in hand. We totally. all could get there. <laughs> Because the enemy knows that it has great influence and power oh, over it. Absolutely. It sears your conscience. It separates you big time from That's who right. you are. That's yeah. right. So we're all going to the Garden of Eden. Yes, we are. The place of his wonderful boundaries around us in intimacy with him, the place of joy with him. So it, what, a, what a great, thank you, Ariel. Thank you so much for uh, all that you shared. And thank you, God, for being here. And uh, I think we're, we're ready to pray out, girl. We are. All right, let's do it. Wow, what a what a morning. Got to go back. Um, Heavenly Father, man, it's just it's who you are. You are so beyond our imagination, um, Lord. Your your grace, your love, your mercy, your abundance of life that you bring to us, your goodness, your faithfulness. Lord, you're just so beyond our imagination. You're everything that we need and desire, Lord. You are enough. Lord, I pray, test us in this. <laughs> because we need to know that, and we need to be strengthened in that. And we need, to, we need your help to see the things that we're gripping onto so tightly, Lord. I know I do it. You've been showing me lately how, you know, in those hard times, I go, I go to the kitchen, grab, grab something to eat, you know, or um, whatever the case, I, I, you know, do a do. <laughs> I do a do to, you know, overcome not wanting to be in that place of feeling or that place of pain. Lord, help us to see the things that we're holding on to tightly. Help us to ask you um, to lighten our grip to let go, to surrender all those things into your hands, to allow you full lordship over our lives, over our heart, because that is the place of security, true security, when you are the Lord of our lives. And Lord, we know that despite our faults, you are here with us always, and you are watching over us, and you are moving things in the direction they need to be moved, Lord. 
bring our hearts in agreement with you to cooperate with you. Lord, we just love you. We praise you. We thank you for your gorgeous word showing us who you are and uh, for your presence with us every day for Jesus. Jesus, thank you for what you did for us, for being the door that we can walk through and have intimacy. Lord, we give you all praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Thank you for this gorgeous journey today. Yep. Can't, wait, can't wait till tomorrow, this week, man. Woo! Y'all have a great day. Get in Psalm 139. All right, we'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Maybe. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, it's still